So everybody, iPadOS 18 has been out for about a week or so, and I wanted to put together a list of the most crucial settings that you should either have on or off for a multitude of reasons, from a privacy setting standpoint, from a battery consumption standpoint, and much more. So without further ado, let's look at exactly which settings you should kind of take a look at while using iPadOS 18. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Paperlike. Paperlike was one of the first iPad accessories that I'd ever tried. The moment that I got my 2018 iPad Pro, I knew I'd have to get the screen protector and it never disappointed. So now, five years later, Paperlike has just released their new version 2.1 or their Swiss Paperlike. Paperlike's proprietary nano dots are tiny micro beads that add resistance and improve haptic feedback when using the Apple Pencil on your iPad, mimicking the feel of writing on paper. The new nano texture display on the 2024 iPad Pros does reduce glare, but doesn't actually enhance the haptic feedback for the Apple Pencil. So for a paper-like feel and better Apple Pencil experience, paper-like is still the best choice. But they recently decided to bring their iPad accessory expertise and create a new premium folio case for the iPad Pro and iPad Air. Their new charcoal folio case aims to bring users the look and feel of your favorite notebook, but for your iPad. My favorite part is how it actually connects via magnets instead of having a shell or a case to mount it. All you do is slap your iPad on the magnets to hold it sturdily in place. As you can see, my scientific shake test lets you know just how strong those magnets are. If you're looking for a tri-fold folio case that protects your iPad, can act as a stand and a canvas, is premium and lightweight, you definitely gotta give this one a try. Click the first link in the description below to check it out. It really helps support the 9to5Mac channel. So thank you to Paperlife for partnering up with 9to5Mac. And now, back to the video. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing you're gonna notice with iPadOS 18 is the brand new settings menu. So now this is the first time that Apple completely changed up how the settings menu looks, at least since iOS 7. So you can see that the mainstays are here. So your general, your accessibility, this Apple intelligence piece won't be around until 18.1, but it will be there once you do get 18.1. But then you have some other management stuff on the native level, you have your notifications, your sound, your privacy and security, which we're gonna dive into. But then when it comes to individual applications, Apple actually moved it to a completely different section, which is in this app section down here. So if you tap on here, then it kind of acts almost like an app library. And this is where you manage all of your applications, both from an, a native first party Apple, like an Apple store, but then also all your third party applications, like these bows and the countdowns and the deltas and things like that. So this is how you go on a per app basis if you wanna manage things from a settings menu perspective. And it is relatively easy to find everything. You can either search up here or search with these side buttons right here, or again, just scroll through. It is annoying that they're adding pretty much one extra step in order to find individual applications in the settings menu, but that is the new version of the settings menu in terms of a layout. But now let's get into your battery settings. So something new that came up is going to be battery health. Now you get a bunch more information on the type of battery health that you have. It's a little bit more robust on the iOS side, but from the iPadOS side, you get a rating in terms of battery health, which is normal, the total maximum capacity. This is still relatively new M4 iPad Pro. So having 100% is expected. You get your cycle count, and then you also have the 80% limit, which can be turned on. And the reason you would wanna turn this on for longevity purposes is because you don't wanna max out the battery every single time you charge it, similar to driving EV, right? If you kinda of max out your battery every single time, that kind of upper echelon, so that 90 to 100% starts to diminish, making your battery life that much worse over time. So turning this on is a great way to preserve battery life over a long period of time. Another awesome battery saving one is if you go into your iCloud over here, then go into personal information, and then go to communication preferences, you wanna turn all of these off. This is both from a privacy and battery saving mode because it saves from a data standpoint, but also from a data collection standpoint. So turning these off in terms of receiving Apple emails, I don't wanna have any of that. I turn off all these apps, music, TV, and more recommendations, so receive emails about all these different applications. And then finally, the Apple newsletter. I like to turn all this off because I don't care for it. If I wanna look for it, I will look for it myself. Another big battery saving one, and also on the data privacy, and that's gonna be a big focus when it comes to these types of settings, is going to be in the Wi-Fi settings, and then down here where it says ask to join networks. I like to keep it on to notify, but some people like to even keep it turned off because every single time you move locations and it starts to look for a Wi-Fi network, that is going to take a battery and it opens up and makes you a little bit more susceptible to getting hacked from a Wi-Fi perspective. So for me, I like to keep it on notify, but for others, if you do want to really save battery, then turn it into off. The next thing I want to get to is app store settings. So if we scroll down here and go into app store settings, 
There's a few settings in here that you're gonna to wanna to turn off. So app downloads, app updates, and then finally in-app content, you're gonna to wanna to turn all these off to make sure that you're saving battery and making sure that you're not automatically installing free and paid app purchases on other devices and making sure that they kind of stay separate. Now, if you wanna have your app downloads kind of go and mimic what's going on in your iOS device and vice versa, you can turn that on. But again, I like to keep that off. And then finally, video auto playback. I like to turn this onto Wi-Fi only. So what this means is that when you go into the app store and you start to look at some of the images that are on there, some of them do have videos. And if you have this turned on to Wi-Fi only, those videos will autoplay only if you're on Wi-Fi or if you do have a data version of the iPad, you can turn it to on. But I like to either have it on Wi-Fi only or completely turned off to make sure I'm saving battery life and data consumption. Now, another setting that you're gonna wanna play with is going to happen inside of the sound setting. So if you go into sounds, there's a menu option that you're gonna wanna to toggle off and that's gonna be this change with buttons. Now what change with buttons means is that if you turn it on, that means if you wanna turn down the volume of let's say your music on your iPad, it's going to also turn down the volume of your more important things that you wanna have turned on like your alarm clock and timers and things like that. So if you turn it off, that means if you're lowering and increasing the volume of let's say a media playback like a YouTube video, or something like music, it will not affect the volume of, let's say your alarm clock or a timer or any other kind of more important sound that doesn't have to rely on media. So make sure this is turned off so you aren't manipulating the volume on your alarm clock at the same time as you're changing the volume on your media playback. Now, another big one that came to iOS 18 and iPadOS 18 or a feature is going to be screen sharing and screen control. But one thing that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's turned off is gonna be in notifications. And then there's gonna be a new menu option called screen sharing. You're gonna to wanna to have this turned off because if you are in a situation where maybe you are sharing your screen via FaceTime with somebody else, your notifications by default will be coming in. So make sure that you turn this off so that if you do get a notification when you are screen sharing, the other person that's viewing your screen via their device will not get that same notification because last thing you want is to have a sensitive notification come in and have the other person see it when they're not supposed to be seeing it. All right, another big one when it comes to data as well as battery consumption is going to be, again, in the privacy setting and making sure that this tracking setting is either toggled on and off and according to your personal preferences. So you can see that here, I have the main one toggled on, allow apps to request to track because every time I open the app for the first time, it will ask me if I am allowed to track it. So you can see here that I have a few different applications that are turned off and a few that are turned on. I'm gonna turn eBay off because I don't think eBay needs to request to track my information, but X is turned on. I'm gonna leave that on because I like to get the recommendations that X gives me. So that is going to be one that you're gonna have to go on an app by app basis, or you can just completely turn it off. And then to stay in here, if you scroll all the way down and go to analytics and improvements, you're gonna to wanna to come in here and turn off whichever one you see fit. Now for the most part, I like to keep some of these turned on because I am in the beta program and I like to make sure that iPadOS gets better over time. But if you're somebody that just wants to have everything turned off to save battery life and again, keep everything as private as possible, then by all means go through these and turn all these off because they will be good battery savers over a long period of time. Now to continue on with the privacy and security settings, you're gonna to wanna to go into Apple advertising and make sure that personalized ads are turned off. Turning off personalized ads will limit Apple's ability to deliver relevant ads to you, but will not reduce the number of ads you receive. So again, it just goes down to what type of information Apple is collecting, and the less they get, the better in my opinion. Now, another setting that I wanna make sure is turned on, because I personally think it does make my life easier, is going to be the improved search button. So help improve search by allowing Apple to store your Safari, Siri, Spotlight, Lookup, and image searches in the queries. The information collected is stored in a way that does not identify you and is used to improve search results, which I've actually noticed in Spotlight. Whenever I go into Spotlight search, it knows exactly what I'm about to search depending on time of day, depending on what app is open. So being able to just have your search be as efficient as possible is a great thing to have. So make sure that this is turned on. The next one is gonna to have to do with your keyboard. So if you go into your keyboard, go into your keyboards over here, you can add a new keyboard. And what I like about this is the new multilingual support. So if I type in Spanish, put in Latin America, you can either add it to the English keyboard or add it to a new keyboard totally. And if you add it to your English keyboard, that means that you can actually type in English and Spanish and get the correct autocorrects and be able to, again, speak bilingually via text message without it saying that maybe it's an incorrect word because it's in a different language and things like that. So being able to, again, speak in Spanglish via iMessage is huge for me. Another battery saver in your general is going to be the background app refresh. Make sure that you want the ones that are turned on to be turned on and then the ones that you wanna turn off to turn them off. As you can see, these are all turned on for me, which is definitely bad for battery life, but you can do the master switch by turning them all off at once if you don't care to have some of these running in the background because that's essentially what this means is that it's gonna be loading more data in the background even though it isn't, isn't opened up. Now this next one is a doozy that you should definitely turn off because it is a huge battery drain and that's gonna be turning off significant location. So again, if we go back into our privacy and security, scroll to the top to where it says location services and scroll all the way down to system services and then go down to significant locations, 
it's going to scan your face and then this is going to have a ton of different records of all the locations that you visit on a significant or frequent basis so then ios or ipad os is able to improve the efficiency of what it wants you to do at these locations it also helps from a find my perspective and security but i like to keep this turned off because for the most part i don't care for this and it does take up a ton of battery and as you can see, it's already collected 154 records in just a couple months time. So again, if you don't wanna be basically tracked everywhere you go, I would recommend turning this off. So now let's get into some other elements of iPadOS 18 and some things that you should kind of change up and customize to make it easier for you. So the Photos application is a little bit hit or miss depending on who you ask. I've already gotten used to it because I've been using iPadOS 18 since WWDC. But if you do wanna kind of go back or maybe reorganize some of these cards and collections, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there is a customize and reorder button, which allows you to manage, reorder, and, and remove different cards in different sections of the Photos application. So if you want to move maybe the recent days down a little bit, if you want to move the albums all the way down to the bottom, you can see that in real time it's going to change for you to make it easy to navigate and make it a little bit more familiar. And then another cool thing that came with the Photos application is going to be the new slow-mo mode. So if you record something in 60fps or now 120 on the new iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max, and then if you go to edit it, you can actually slow-mo it with this new little click wheel or this new playback speed button in real time. So you can actually change it to 30 FPS and then also manage exactly where you're gonna be starting that 30 FPS, make it shorter, make it longer. And you can do all this directly in the Photos application, which is something we couldn't do before. Another interesting one that kind of came in terms of a customization standpoint is as you can see this little cursor, it blinks. And that's been blinking ever since, I don't know, iOS 1 or Phone OS 1 but now you can actually stop it so the cursor is static and it's not blinking like that. So if you go into your settings, go into accessibility, then go into motion, and then you see this new preferred non-blinking cursor. If we turn that on and then go back into our notes application, you can see that the cursor is no longer blinking, which is kind of an interesting thing that I didn't know people didn't like, but it is a setting that is now available, which I'm all for extra customization. So a few more settings menu options that you want to get into, but this is going to be on a per app basis, is if you go into the apps and go to Safari, you're going to want to have this one turned on. And that's going to be down here in the settings of Safari, and that's going to be highlights. Make sure that's toggled on because it gives you a nice insight on a per web page basis. So here I have a story on 9to5Mac, and if I click on this right here and go to show reader, you can actually summarize it and it'll give you a summary of exactly what Ben wrote, which is nice to see. So this kind of has to do probably with Apple intelligence, but it is available with iPadOS 18 if you want to start trying that out. And now if we go back into our settings and then go to Wi-Fi and then go to this little I button for more information, you now have the ability to rotate your private Wi-Fi address if you want to make it a little bit more difficult to read your private Wi-Fi address. So here it says a rotating private address reduces tracking by periodically changing this device's Wi-Fi address on this network. And then one more to get into before I get talk about the AirPods Pro real quick, is if you go down to accessibility and then go to audio visual, you can actually turn this on, which is add voice isolation. So if you go to, let's say Apple TV and you're watching a TV show, I do recommend giving Bad Monkey a try. But if you go down here, you get this new button, which allows you to enhance dialogue and you can isolate, boost or enhance individual dialogue to make it easier to listen. Like I know there's a lot of action movies, for instance, that'll have maybe the background music or some sort of effect going extremely loud. So you can't really hear what people are saying from a dialogue standpoint. Now this should help alleviate that issue by boosting, isolating and enhancing that dialogue. And last but not least, if you grab your AirPods Pro, make sure they're open and connected and go into your AirPods Pro settings. There's a couple options that you're gonna wanna make sure are turned on. First and foremost is going to be adaptive audio, which allows you to customize the adaptive audio and how much noise, more noise, or by default, it's going to let in or cancel out. So definitely play with this to make sure it fits your needs. And then lastly, if you go down to head gestures, this is new with iPadOS 18. So being able to create head gestures to interact with your AirPods without having to, you know, say Siri or without having to click on the stocks, you can just nod your head yes, nod your head no, in order to decline, dismiss, accept, or reply a call or a text message. So those are the settings that I think are most crucial for you guys to try out with iPadOS 18. Let's finish up this video. So as you saw everybody, Apple completely revamped the settings menu to make it a little bit easier to navigate and a little bit more searchable. And overall, I'm happy with all the settings updates that Apple gave us, whether it is on a per app basis or in the settings menu in general. And I wanted to put together this list that you already saw to kind of give you guys an idea of what settings should be turned off and on. And again, we are just scratching the surface, but this is my list of the most crucial settings that you should take a look at for battery consumption, privacy settings, and just overall customization and management for you guys to have the best experience 
with your iPad running iPadOS 18. So let me know what settings you ended up changing up, did you learn anything new from this video, and if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And again, big shout out to Paperlight for partnering up with 9to5Mac on this video and their continued support of our content, but that'll do it everybody. If you want to watch more videos like this one, definitely click on one of these videos right here. I think you're going to really enjoy them, but until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here everybody. Peace.